We spring forward next weekend and lose an hour of sleep. Here to help us with the time change is Dr. Jennifer Kanan from UConn Health. First of all, why do we all see what we perceive as these negative effects? We're always so much more tired when we spring forward. So as a society, I think we're really sleep deprived. We undervalue sleep. And so when we spring forward and essentially lose an hour of sleep, we then reap the consequences of that. We really, really recognize how sleep deprived we really are. What can people do? I mean, it, it comes on Sunday. What can we start to do maybe now to help lessen those effects? So you know it's coming. So plan ahead. Start to adjust your sleep schedule accordingly. You may want to back up when you're going to bed by 10 or 15 minutes so you're more well adjusted to the time change. You also want to pay attention to your schedule. So you want to make sure that you stick to a schedule with regards to your sleep. Pay close attention to caffeine intake, alcohol intake, smoking. All these things can dramatically affect your sleep. And also, um, large meals can affect them as well. Exactly. So if you ingest a large meal, you're going to spend time digesting it and the indigestion may impact your sleep negatively. What should people do? I mean, I think that this is a problem that, like you said, we see all the time. We're generally sleep deprived. You know, people should probably use those tips on a regular basis, not even just this weekend. So that's an excellent point. Good sleep is a cornerstone to good health. So along with diet and exercise, you really want to focus on sleep. Also, paying attention to your children's sleep is, I think, very important as well. So that's something that, you know, parents should really focus on as we go through this time change. Children are more negatively impacted by sleep deprivation than adults. What should parents do? So you want to make sure those devices are off at least an hour before bedtime. Don't take your device into the room. So when children tend to take their device into the room, all sorts of things happen that you don't have control over. So make sure that the device stays somewhere that, where you know where it is and it's turned off at least an hour before bedtime. Another important point is that you want to invite sleep and not demand it. So you want to set up a relaxing ritual, a relaxing routine, maybe take a bath at night, read a relaxing book so that you're ready to go to sleep. And last question for you. I've always heard that a big problem with those devices, whether you're on your iPhone or your iPad, is the light that's coming off of it. Is that really what is a big factor here? So there are two big factors. One is, as you mentioned, the light. So those devices tend to emit a blue wavelength of light. And that'll reset your internal clock. The other thing is that the devices are very uh, alerting. They're exciting to play with, you're talking to your friends, you're watching an exciting video. This is stimulating. So again, you're not inviting sleep. You really want to invite the sleep. All right. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. We'll try to heed those warnings and advice to hopefully get some rest this weekend. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. <laughs>